Hasta luego. Hasta luego. Ah. You know what that means uh, in uh, see you later, luego later, <laughs> until later. <laughs> okay, thank you. Good morning, everyone. Uh, we are here in Gold Forest uh, uh, doing our morning chanchi on Saturday, and thank you all for joining us. First of all, I'd like to apologize. We're a little bit running behind schedule because we have been experiencing some power outages issues. And uh, uh, miraculously, we have power right now. Uh, so okay, you can still um, work uh, together. Uh, uh, one thing today, uh, just to keep you informed, um, we have some new ladies visitors, the first times, they speak Spanish, and uh, very, very first uh, time, and uh, they can't cross their legs. So luckily for us, uh, we have a macho nacho here who can speak to them, and so, uh, so we uh, uh, we um, a little bit uh, ill-prepared for this, uh, but it, uh, I know from a commercial perspective, if we were to a regular Chan class, where we, we, uh, we typically would be better equipped, be prepared for s such uh, uh, situations. But as part of our training, our training is uh, to try our best uh, in accord with the conditions, with the circumstances. And it's the attitude. I like uh, all, you all to understand. Mm, we are understaffed. We're trying to do too much, and uh, and uh, we have a lot of things that are deficient and lacking. But what's not lacking is the heart that we like to try our best to help everyone as much as possible. So what happened to the new visitors is that. We took a bunch of people who came here to cultivate and learn from us, who volunteered then, decided to take them offline and go take care of them. So that's the attitude that um, I'd like you to understand. Uh, is the, not so much about the results. Uh, what interests me is your heart, uh, that we're willing to share the good things we have and help as much as we can. And that's good enough for me, okay? So thank you all for your patience, and thank you all for your contributions. All right. Hmm. Uh, any questions that we can help you? What happened to all the, um, the screens about, about who's online? So that if people ask, want to ask questions, we know. I cannot see anything. So there's no one online right now? That's it? No online people. There's online people, but they, there's no YouTube questions. No YouTube. No, just, just, just YouTube, no, no questions. No questions, okay. This is. So the people who sign up online, who, who are participating online, are not here, or no one online whatsoever? We are still in this is Discord. Uh, this is Discord. But how do I know that the Zoom thing that people are asking or not? Uh, let's just say hello. They have are you today? No Zoom. No Zoom today. We have YouTube, but they haven't asked any questions yet. And, and uh, OK. And usually I see a bunch of screens. Only Friday? Asian thing? Is an Asian thing the screens? I see. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> okay, nobody today. Okay. Let's continue then. Let's continue uh, looking to the song of enlightenment. Uh, okay? Mm, the glimpse, look at the glimpse of, uh, of uh, Master Yung Jia's. Uh, Jung Chia's uh, revelations about his uh, experiences uh, about enlightenment, uh, which is a real important document in Buddhism. So 
That's why it was so uh, greatly admired and, and revered in a Chinese culture, in a Chinese Chan culture. And so let's uh, continue and, and peek into uh, the, his words of wisdom. All right? We are right now on slide 91. Okay, he says, uh, he says uh, let the four elements go. Do not grasp at them. Right? The four elements. Uh, the bodies are made of the four elements. Uh, earth, wind, fire, and water. Earth refers to the flesh, these salt things that we have, the bones, and so forth. The wind it refers to the breathing, hmm? and the fire is the heat generated inside our body. Uh, we need to that fire there uh, to keep us alive, as well as the water. Uh, so those four elements are, are the representatives of the physical makeup of our bodies, okay? Of course, there's a lot more. Uh, but what happens to normal people is that mm, we're fixated on the four elements, okay? On, mm, and so, so Master Yung Chia says, uh, you know, from a perspective of uh, an enlightened person, uh, the, uh, in order for you to get there, you need to understand the mindset, okay? That is, you should not be too attached to your body. This is, this is an insight that's very important, okay? If you oh, are, are adamant about um, how important your body is, okay? Mm then there's not a chance for you to develop real wisdom. What is this real wisdom we're talking about? The real wisdom what we're talking about requires this first raw ingredient, which is absence of confusion. If you insist on being confused, on things that make you confused, things that uh, cause confusion in your mind, then it's not possible to, for you and for us to help you unfold your wisdom. And this is why when the Buddha uh, was uh, speaking of Dharma, it's, uh, it's designed his words are meant to help us let go of the things that cause us confusion before we can be taught on how to activate our wisdom, how to access our wisdom. And so this is very fundamental in this process. For example, uh, uh, when we uh, teach you meditation, when the first thing we do in, in our tradition, and uh, Weiyang tradition, is we uh, teach you, we, we choose to teach you to sit in full lotus. And sitting in full, full lotus is not a natural thing for your body. You bend your legs, and therefore it uh, draws attention to your uh, the discomfort that uh, accrues and accumulates in your body, okay? Mm. And, and so, so it's that process there uh, will help you identify the attachment to your four elements. And through training, it's a natural. Every one of us is attached to our four elements. Okay, so it's a natural process where we understand that attachment, and that's why our training is if 
your long-term goal is to open your wisdom, okay, then you will need to, at the, at the least, uh, be less attached to your body, less and less attached. The less attached you are to your body, the faster you can open your wisdom. And so what Master Yung Cha is, is uh, giving us here is an insight into you can talk all you want. You can meditate as long as you want. You can recite the Buddha's name as long as you want. You can recite your mantras as much as you want. But ultimately, all that will help, will have to converge to this point where you have to reduce the attachments to your bodies. So that's why in our Chan training is a, more, a lot more intensive than most of the other Chan training or meditation training or secret school training or Pure Land training because we help you face head on this attachment to our bodies, this is natural attachment to our bodies. Okay, the confused people revere the bodies. I, mean, I notice I use the word revere because it's in your mindset. Body comes first. Okay, that's what Master Yung Cha is talking about. Uh, do not grasp at them. Okay, don't hang on tightly and, mm, and, mm, and refusing to let go. You do that, it's very difficult for you to unfold your wisdom. Okay? What is the basis of this? The Buddha taught already. Okay? Uh, I noticed that uh, soccer day, huh? Yeah? Cool. Oh. A lot of our students uh, in the process of learning about Chan, uh, the majority of them are willing to try this, uh, this uh, crossing their legs, whether it's in comfortable position, half lotus, full lotus, lotus, and so forth. Okay, mm. and, and, uh, uh, and so I saw, for example, uh, a few of them uh, that struggled mightily. Not just the full lotus thing, uh, but also uh, many other issues. Okay, and all of a sudden, uh, recently, one day I noticed that they... <sighs> became so peaceful. Not as afflicted than before. Okay. And, and this is one manifestation of wisdom. When you have wisdom, you naturally not as afflicted. Okay? And what is this foundation of wisdom in Buddhism that the Buddha taught? This is a hint that this is, this is, this is the insider tips that you should know. In particular, the meditation, meditation instructors, teachers should know. Okay? Hmm. Wisdom in Buddhism the one that counts is what level of samadhi we're talking about. 
Hmm? You think, what level is this? When we talk about wisdom in Buddhism, we're not talking about non-Buddhist wisdom, okay? Non-Buddhist wisdom, whatever they call it, their own wisdom is really much lower level of wisdom compared to our first level of so-called Buddhist wisdom. Below this level, you are confused. This, wis- this level, we reach this level, then you consider to have some wisdom. And which is that? It's two. First, uh, first stage aha. First stage aha. Until you reach first stage aha, you're confused like heck. From a Buddhist perspective. And we know until you reach first stage aha, we can push you so far. Because you overload it, you go berserk. Okay, so that's why, uh, as a reminder, those of you who look at people and have not been certified yet, okay, go slow on them. Take it easy. Don't rush them. Don't push them too hard. Okay, because they get afflicted. They're overwhelmed by their afflictions. Okay, and what is what is the requirement for you to reach first stage ahat. Yes, too. The slides here has not attached to body, or is that right? Not attached to. You have to let go this delusion in your mind, which is yes, you too. Master, uh, Burmese used to has a question. Um, Tanvin asks, uh, how can we cultivate at uh, the state of nirvana? when you are crossing over the body, then where does the karma go? I don't understand the question. Master, can I uh, repeat in Vietnamese then? Sure. Um, he asks, uh, làm sao để tu tập ở trạng thái Niết Bàn khi vượt qua cơ thể thì nghiệp sẽ đi về đâu? He's confusing nirvana and body. Attachment to the body, other the limitations of the body. They're two separate things. Nirvana is nirvana, and attachment to your body is attachment to your body. And they're not even in the same neighborhood. It's like you're comparing uh, 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 the poppers with with uh, the royalty, okay? The peasants with the nobility. It's, it, there's no, there's just no, it's not even close to each other. And this is, this is natural because the more you read of these, about these concepts, the more your mind begins to misinterpret them, excessive or overabundance of information in your mind, and none of it makes sense to you. And that's what happened to me personally as well. So I really sympathize with, with, uh, with such, uh, such people. I was very confused when I first started. I read too much, typically. A typical educated person, okay, we I'm very, I'm personally, I like to read. I love to read. I'm, I'm a voracious reader. I love to synthesize information as per my, my training. My training is to, to gather information and synthesize them 
and make decisions based on that. Okay? Mm. And, and so this is a typical uh, mistake that people make when they learn about Buddhism. Buddhism sounds good. It reads very well, especially Hinayana uh, text uh, translated into Vietnamese, into English, okay? Uh, so there's, a, there's many, many um, authors who translate it, have many versions of translation of uh, the Hinayana, or, the, what, or what would you want to call it, Theravada, same thing. Mm. Those texts from Pali into English, from uh, Sanskrit into English, that section there, Hinayana section, um, and Vietnamese and so forth, you know, other languages. Um, they have a problem. Uh, the problem is that they're so appealing to you intellectually. Okay? What people fail to understand is that when the Buddha taught those things, it's because mm. to whom? He taught the Hinayana teachings to the disciples who knew how to meditate already. When he taught Hinayana to, uh, uh, when he first taught Hinayana teachings, it's to the five attendants in a deer park. And those were advanced meditation practitioners already. So they were near the phase we were talking about here, grasping at the four elements, grasping at the body. Okay? And therefore, therefore, Hmm. They have the fundamentals in order to understand the teachings. But if the regular person who simply, very much like scholars, for example, professors, for example, who do not meditate, and all they do as per their training is read texts and try to synthesize them, okay? frankly, they don't understand the words. They don't understand the intent of the teachings. Very much like here, uh, when Master Yung Chia says, do not grasp at the four elements, what she's referring to is that what he's, what he's not explicitly telling you is that in order for you to get to this state of enlightenment here, or state of wisdom here, uh, the first thing you need to do, the first obstacle to this process is your grasping at your body, your attachment to your body. That is called view delusions. View delusions in Buddhism refers that to the fact that you have these prejudices that you take for granted. You take, you take to be the truth. Your body is, the body is your temple. Sounds familiar in English? We hear it very often. Your body is your temple. Worship it. Take good care of it. All right? And so what he's telling you is revere your delusion. Hang on. Grasp at your delusion. Grasp at your understanding. Wow, that was fast. Okay, and so, so the question from you, from you, the YouTube person uh, is a, is a proof that he does not understand about transcending the attachment to the body versus nirvana. It's it's so far apart. Even if you transcend the attachment to your body. It doesn't mean you reach first stage ahadship yet. It doesn't mean you have wisdom yet. It's just, it's just you're on the way to reaching and developing your wisdom. Why is it relevant? Developing wisdom means that you can recognize 
what's good for you when you hear it. It's not about understanding anymore. It's about wisdom, it's about recognizing how beneficial it is for you. If you're confused, whatever we tell you, you cannot recognize the good stuff from the bad stuff. So that's why you cannot differentiate. All right, Wei Mountain. A um, master, uh, so the YouTube, uh, he has a comment. He say that uh, because in the past, uh, I have learned that Dhamma is about form, feeling, uh, thought, activity, and consciousness, and prajna. Therefore, um, when we transcending the body, uh, this part, uh, I haven't been able to do so. So I appreciate master explanation. What he talked about is a theory. It's called, in Vietnamese, it's called Li. Okay, the theory, the principles behind it. In, in Buddhism is also the other part that is equally important. It is called the specifics. What, what are, what it takes, let me put it, simply put, what it, what it takes for you, hmm, from your, from his perspective, to understand this theory here. So for example, let me be specific for you. Let's say we talk about do not be attached to your body. All right? That's a principle that Master Yung Cha is talking about here, okay? That's wisdom, that's words of wisdom, okay? We're not gonna make any, mis any, uh, any excuses about this. You want wisdom, we share our wisdom with you. The Buddhist wisdom is that, yes, the body is important. Yes, you need to take care of the body, but you need not be attached to it. It's very much like, you use a knife when you cook, and by using a knife, it will get dull. On the other hand, if you worship your knife to the point where you don't dare use it, then your knife is useless to you. Is that clear? The body is the same thing as that knife. You need to use it, okay? But you need to, as you use it, you have to take care of it, okay? And, and therefore, it's a balance there. Am I making sense? Okay. Don't be attached to the body meaning to the body meaning that use it wisely. You cannot say I uh, should not be attached to the body therefore I will not comb my hair, will not take a shower, uh, will not eat. That's no wisdom in there. All right? And so, so the teaching is that don't be attached to the body, okay? Is the, is the principle. And there's a instructions, specifics about what you need to do so that you can be detached from the body at the right time. when needed. All right? So that is the specifics, instructions that you learn from meditation. Meditation are the set of instructions. Part of meditation is a set of instructions to help you identify the nature of the attachment to your body. Attachment to the body has 
many, many facets. Okay? Some people, like me, is hair. When you're younger, let me tell you, when you start seeing your hair falling off, in our culture, hair for men is like uh, masculinity. Okay? So you start worrying about that hair thing here. And men, we go to, uh, what do they have thing to grow hair? I forgot now, Rogaine in my generation. You used to use Rogaine, men out there? You guys use Rogaine? A long time ago, I know. I'm dating myself. <laughs> and so you see, I, I know it's funny for you, but it's not a funny for me. Uh, okay? So this attachment to my hair here is inherent in our culture. Okay? Because it's the, you know, in my generation, you have to be macho. You know, nacho knows what I'm talking about. Okay? And, and so, and so, this, the, the, the so what did we do? What, did, what, what was I told to do when I, in order for me to open my wisdom? One of the first tests for me was, am I willing to let go of my hair and shave it? So when, that, you see, it's funny, but it's part of the instructions to help us let go of those attachments. Okay? And so... So, see, again, I'm, I'm illustrating for you the two sides. The one side is that there's a principle behind it. Don't be attached to the body. But then also in Buddhism, we also teach you, give you specifics, the, the, the detailed instructions on how to get there. So this, this person, uh, who, uh, a YouTube question, and who asked a YouTube question, uh, saw the, 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 um, the, um, the teachings, the theory, the principles behind it, but he was never, uh, he never received the instruction how to, well, to achieve that state of detaching from your body when necessary. For example, it's natural, not, it's natural for us to be attached to the body because we need it. All right? And therefore, uh, when it's time to eat, we should eat. However, there are times when uh, we, for example, out of depression, overeat. At the time, it's okay, again, it's okay to eat enough so that we nourish our body so that we can use it. Okay? Mm. However, mm. let's say because... In, in, in many cases, quite often, more often than people want to admit, we have depression. So part of nature of depression, we feel bad. And part of feeling bad is we, we overreact to it. So we said, I don't want to feel bad. So we do things to make us feel better, to distract ourselves from feeling bad. So one of them, one of the activities for most people is to eat. It feels good when you eat. You feel better when you eat. This is why, you know, I saw statistics recently that there's a high level, excuse me, of obesity in the world right now, everywhere. And that's it's an indication, that's a proof that many, many people in the world are depressed. Because that's how they compensate for feeling bad by doing things to feel better. You see? That's the facts. So how does having wisdom help you? Okay. 
Uh, first of all, it's a good thing to eat. Okay? But overeating, eating too much is not good. So the good part we keep. Okay? But the bad part is that when you feel full enough, you don't need to overeat anymore. You need to recognize overeating after you're full. Okay? Uh, in many cases, are driven by depression. So the wise people, the wise Buddhists, realizes that. So he says, I realize that I need to eat, but I have a tendency to overeat because I haven't been diagnosed yet, and you should get it diagnosed because of depression. Okay, yeah. so, so part of wisdom is that when you recognize that your actions are driven by confusion, then you can stop a lot more easily. You can stay on top. You're no longer a victim of depression when you're able to stop yourself. Okay? And so that's why meditation is very helpful. Um, we, in helping you uh, open your wisdom and develop skills to detach from your body at the right time that we're talking about. Meaning that you eat, you, feel, you get your feel, and you feel good, that's fine. But overeating, okay, is when you realize you're overeating, you can stop. That's wisdom. That's a skill that's necessary for your health, both mental and physical. Okay, so that gentleman there never... Uh, he read a lot, he learned a lot, he enjoyed the Buddhist teachings, but he was never taught the specifics on how to let go of the four elements, let go of his grasping at the four elements. Okay? Uh, you need to learn to do that before you can develop the ability to enter nirvana and actually feel great about yourself and about life. That's two separate levels. That's quite far from each other. Very, very far. All right? That's why, that's why that's, I answered that way earlier. I said, you're not even close talking about a peasant versus nobility, okay? They don't live in the same neighborhood, I don't think. I'm a pauper, so I don't know how rich, where rich people live, how they live. Yes, Seven. Uh, I'm Ito for Master. Um, yesterday I heard Master also explain about uh, uh, Nirvana is uh, a type of uh, uh, Samadhi. So let's say that uh, uh, samadhi, samadhi is the action of uh, thought. Uh, we are beginner. I, I try to explain to the Vietnamese question that uh, uh, we are um, beginner uh, meditation practitioner. So, uh, so now we have a roadmap. The first, uh, in order to achieve the absence of of thought that uh, because because we currently are very scattered, so at least we have to bring our mind to uh, single-minded. That the first step, and uh, sitting in cross leg, that the method, that wonderful method, that can uh, bring our our scatteredness to uh, to one thought, which is the the pain. 
And when you overcome that, then your, your mind will be uh, less scattered. And then uh, when you have uh, enough skill and also you have enough blessing, you will have a taste of, uh, of uh, the single-mindedness or sometimes it just, uh, the thought it disappear and then uh, you can get into the uh, samadhi a second or a fraction of a second and then you have the bliss of it. And then you keep practices uh, uh, to to lengthen the, the the time in samadhi. There's several uh, progress in the road, and and you have to be have to be very diligent and and practice it. So it may be, so it, it's like you go in home, and then you every day you go in home, you walk home, or you drive home. And after a year, you, you don't need to follow the map anymore. You just know how to get home. So that's the similar way to get into this samadhi. Autonomous driving. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, not that way. <laughs> but uh, but in, your, in your conscious, you know, you just know because you, you, you know the road well. So, so from that point to the other point with... Uh, uh, when you uh, enter nirvana and then how about karma and all that is uh, is um, uh, another because i used to ask those kind of questions i recognize that uh, 100% uh, it is not like uh, what we think because uh, um, 99% of what we read we study is garbage it's very insulting to, to know that but it's garbage it's nothing to, to, to be real when you practice. Republicans are so radical. This, these are, these are actually is ob obstacle because when you sit and your mind already expects something, that's the one it, it stops you uh, to progress. So, so when, when you, you, do, um, you commit karma because the habit uh, the habitual thing you do in many, many lives, you do it unconsciously, and therefore that uh, causes the, the karma. And uh, you have to be very alert. The more skill in, in, in meditation, then you get uh, more alert, and then you stop yourself, you look back to yourself, and then don't do things, uh, your, your, your habit. Uh, uh, lead you to that uh, how you you can uh, you you can gradually stop uh, commit karma and there is a long long way to uh, to be uh, to 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 be not commit uh, um, uh, karma or or reach to the, the the first stage ahad or even further to the fourth stage as which which is you you are in uh, you no longer commit commit any uh, uh, karma because uh, you are um, you you are um, uh, you you are attached from yourself, so you are selfless. So, so that where the, the goal is, but it, it's a long process, and uh, it doesn't help much to uh, to understand it. But what I try to say. Why did it take you? Did it take? Why you speak so long? You could have said it doesn't help for you to understand. <laughs> But, but that that um, all the reader or or, or the scholar that explain like that, and many of us went through that process. And first, we are very proud of what we understand, but after that, we are very sad because those are garbage. I'm so sad <laughs> to hear that all ninety nine percent of the garbage. I mean, Buddhist teaching is garbage. My God, it's too radical. 98%, not 99. <laughs> Way Mountain. Master, uh, the man replied, um, this is the first time he have ever heard the explanation of the four elements as empty like this. He have never heard this before, so he's really appreciate this lecture. No problem. Yes, too. Uh, this is a different topic. Uh, Master, I have a question for myself. Yes. Uh, I observed myself uh, sometimes when I get angry, 
uh, it doesn't happen that often, but when I get angry, uh, it's actually weird that I would feel very energetic and feel very strong in qi and feels almost like after long set, it's like qi is strong and then my head is actually clear and it feels kind of good. So it's really weird that at the same time, both angry or something, but also feel good about it. It's a, about the general, it's like pleasant in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I, I observed this a few times. And yeah. Just kind of intriguing for me. Okay. Is it like love and hate at the same time? I don't really know what's love. <laughs> it doesn't, it's different. It's really just it's the different. Chi. It's just the. It's not that much different. Um, it's almost like the same after I go to temple, do Chan Chi for a couple of days. Just the head is clear and. She's strong, so. So you, so you should get angry more often. That's what I was thinking. It's kind of uh, very, yeah, puzzling in that sense. It almost feel, feels like it's. Good. Who do you get angry at? Uh, like my boss, for example. <laughs> the one who's gone. Yeah. <laughs> like when I felt he uh, was doing. He was being uh, unfair to me. Uh, I was angry. Okay. okay. Um, you see, you need specifics. When you say, I get angry, it doesn't mean anything to me. When you say, I get angry at my boss, I say, ah, now that makes sense to me. You cannot speak like that. You cannot speak in theory to me. I'm very dumb. Uh, there was also another time. What, okay, uh, yeah, yeah, another. What's another uh, time? Angry. And uh, like, oh, I love to gossip. You notice that. <laughs> uh, this is like a year ago, more than a year ago. My husband. <laughs> Your husband? Yeah. <laughs> that I don't get. How can you get angry at your husband? Come on. <laughs> yes, Nacho, did you have a question? Four. Uh, yeah, I'm into for master. Uh, so yeah, this is regarding when you were mentioning that we shouldn't overeat um, and we should stop it. But sometimes, especially if I have something sweet, I don't know why, but I cannot stop eating. I mean, I I know I can, but it's something like a really strong force. Yeah, yeah. That is, that's yeah. another issue. Just because we know we're supposed to eat doesn't mean we can stop. That's another issue. At least we're talking about wisdom here, folks. Wisdom is to be recognized what's good for us, what's bad for us, okay? But it doesn't mean that we can do it. Wisdom is, is presented to you by the Buddhists, especially the Vietnamese and, and American Buddhists and, this, and, the, and the scholars as something wonderful. And, but, but actually, once you know what it really is, it's ra rather ordinary. <laughs> it's, it's, you can't sell it. This is why I cannot, I cannot find a way to commercialize how to give you wisdom. <laughs> because once you have it, you say, this is what I paid for this? I paid so much money for this? Okay. So, in that case there, when it's, you cannot stop even though you know, even though you, you know you're supposed to, okay? That's a different story, a different uh, situation, okay? Now you need to develop wisdom, not, not, not only wisdom, but the skill to stop. And part of your training is actually is helping you develop the tools to learn to stop. For example, last night during a lecture, if you listen to it, what is one of the tools that the old abbot keeps on bringing up? Recite Wan Yin's name. Okay? When you cannot stop eating, instead of keep on eating, eat a little bit, but then, or eating, you say, Wan Yin, Wan Yin, please help me, help me stop eating. <laughs> you keep on doing that, you will be able to stop eating. It's a skill. It's a tool you can use. I'm overeating. Oh my God, Wan Yin, please help me. Wan Yin, Wan Yin, please help me. I'm hurting myself. And you can stop in the future. 
That's the difference between wisdom, wise people, and unwise people. Unwise people are victims of their afflictions. Wise people recognize they're afflicted, okay? Therefore, they have tools. They reach into the back of tools to help them. All right? And, and so, so going back to their lengthy uh, answer earlier, it's 100% accurate. About the 99% uh, information, Buddhist information that you find is junk. It's true. That's why it doesn't matter how, how hard we work. There's no way our media empire would take over 2%. <laughs> it's impossible. Okay, but it doesn't, will never stop us. Just because it's impossible, we're undaunted. Okay, that's wisdom, by the way. Hmm? You are right, but that's not how we teach people. Just because you're right doesn't know that's how you talk to people. What I train my students is that when people come and they have these issues, okay, you cannot give them the whole recipe. You do that, they say, oh, now I know. You become that part of the 99% of junk information. You understand? Junk because it's useless to you. So information, when you give new people, has to be, has to be appropriate for them has to be useful to them. So for example, for the people who are forthcoming, okay, you don't give them the whole recipe like that. Or the man who asks on, on, on about nirvana and, and, and attachment to the body, you do not give them the whole recipe. Okay? Give them baby steps, baby steps, baby steps. As long, by the way, as long as they feel that they're improving, they're getting better, they will continue. All we can do is help them, encourage them, give them reasons to continue because it's good for them. They feel better. Yeah? Oh. And so it's step by step. And that's part of, the, part of the learning process. Just because you know, you have to learn how to talk to people without overwhelming them. Okay, that's specifics. You have wisdom, but you don't have the specifics on how to help people develop wisdom. Okay, now, as far as somebody making a, making a comment or, you know, about the anger issues, okay, mm -hmm. I will give you a short answer. When you're angry, in the case that she's angry her boss and so forth, okay, I will avoid the husband because I'm a sideward man. So, you, you know, I don't want to, uh, to uh, uh, give you more power over us. I know all our weaknesses, you know, all which button to push, okay. <laughs> See, the men are nodding. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We're suffering enough already, they're all saying, okay, okay. Uh, so that is natural. And one day you understand why it's the case. It's natural. And that's where, that's where your skills become useful. Two. Is that almost like a fight or flight, or I? That's right. Just, yeah. That's right. Let me explain to you. I explained it to you uh, the last week, but you, I don't think you you under, you got it. Okay. You heard of the fight or flight syndrome. Okay, meaning that when. You are in peril, naturally, your self-defense system kicks in. It says, do I fight or do I run? 
Do I stay and fight or do I run away? Okay? That's when you are at your best. You are no longer the, no, the ordinary nacho, but you are the Avenger nacho, super nacho. Is that such, such a dish? Nacho grande. There you go. <laughs> okay? Uh, and, and along with the nacho grande, all, all the beautiful things that, you know, the best of the nachos that you can offer, that you have, is right there at your disposal. And that's where your training becomes useful, priceless. Because you are super nacho. You are nacho grande. And people who are used to seeing you as nacho typically make a mistake of butting heads with the nacho grande. And they lose. And this is why when we train you to develop the nacho grande state, we also teach you not to abuse it. Because you abuse it, you lose. All your training would be useless, would be harmful to you. So that's why same thing. I will help the, the, the person that uh, learn about the Nirvana thing here. Same thing if with us. We teach you about Nirvana, the great advantage of Nirvana. We also teach, about, teach you about the dangers of Nirvana. So that's why the teaching is balanced. We teach you to be supernatural, we also teach you to be super, super Mother Teresa. That's balanced teaching. Yes, you too. Master, your two question as, uh, can Master please teach us about uh, breathing meditation? Second question. First question, no. Second question. Câu hỏi đầu tiên, không. Câu hỏi thứ hai, um, how to, uh, did you, um, uh, in accord with uh, the principle to, um, they, to con control the mind by uh, using breathing meditation. To what the mind? Um, he he used the word uh, rule. What? He used the word um, new li tak e to uh, to do the breathing meditation. Yeah, yeah. Uh, don't do that. Hoi, đừng có làm như vậy. No, don't do that. It's it's garbage. It's just ninety nine percent thing. Okay. Uh, first of all, let me elaborate for you. I don't like to teach breathing meditation. Uh, my master taught that, Buddha taught that, I don't like it. Because there are better things for you to do than breathing. Because you naturally are breathing already. Why do I need to teach you how to breathe? Meditation is a natural thing. And mm, yes, breathing the way the Buddha taught is called mindfulness of the breathing and that's Suti Patana uh, Sutra. I forgot the name, I, I apologize. Sati Patana. Mm. Uh, Sutta. Uh, it's, it's fantastic, but I feel that the Breathing meditation teachers are distorted it, distorted the teaching. And that's why I don't teach anymore. I don't want to teach you uh, breathing about breathing and then you walk out and say, Master taught about breathing too. No, my breathing is very different from the other breathings. My breathing is, <laughs> they're breathing. <laughs> 
Okay, so that's why that's why I feel that there's much more effective things for you to learn than breathing. When you are no longer attached to the breathing and that knowledge and the technique of breathing, that will teach you a better way to breathe, much better way to breathe. So I would teach you advanced breathing, but not beginner's breathing because it's not that good for you. Okay. It's not an effective way to develop your meditation skills. Actually, it's so slow, so primitive. For example, what's the analogy? Mm. It's like uh, in my era, when I was going to college, to high school, okay, when we take a test, we take out a slight ruler to do calculations. You know what I'm talking about? See, you don't even know what I'm talking about. That's how archaic and obsolete it's become. Slide rule. Look up the, the image of a slide rule or something. Slide ruler or whatever. Okay. And the, you know, the, the very keen when you do uh, uh, physics and, and uh, especially physics calculation. Okay. Those complicated uh, formulas, you can use those slide rules. And they have to be so accurate that if you're off, your answer will be off. And, and that's my era. And within 10 years of coming to the US, we started using calculators. And I, I graduated to HP calculators for finance calculations. OK? So that's how archaic it is. So in other words, let me put it this way for you, for, uh, for comparison purposes. The breathing method you're learning that is being taught out there by the Hinayana teachers, Vipassana teachers, whatever they want to call themselves, are like slight rulers to me. They're very ineffective. They're not good meditation practices at all. That's why I don't teach it. I will teach you the advanced breathing later when it's time. Away Mountain. Thank you, Master. Um, what are the skills to help me not to get angry with my boss? Too complicated to explain to you. Okay. It's too general. Uh, what you do is anger. Let me explain it to you. Anger is like this diamond. I know you're going to be shocked. Anger is diamond? Yeah, it's a diamond. Okay? In the rough. So if you're angry, you have anger, and you use it properly, you develop wisdom. So don't say anger is necessarily bad for you. Like in the example here. We have an example of someone who got angry, say, ah, uh, it's a good state. Okay, if you use it right. Hmm. And so, uh, so that's why, that's why when you have, when we talk about anger, it's, 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 a, it's a big, big thing. It's a rough, rough thing. So you need to be specific. Specifics. What are you angry about? And then you learn to deal with each facet at a time. And that's like a diamond, cutting a diamond in the rough. Okay? You, see, you see that you look at that, Okay, and the, the skilled uh, craftsman, artisan, will look at the diamond and he decides on how to cut the diamond so that you have a piece of art, a creation, if you will. Okay, so anger is a, I use, we should use anger as motivation to improve ourselves instead of beating ourselves up as you angry, bad girl, naughty girl. I'm, I don't function like that, okay? okay? Anger to me is a motivation for me to 
fine tune myself to improve myself. I don't get depressed about it. I don't beat myself up on that, okay? Unnecessarily, okay? Uh, what I do is occasionally, if I can't take it anymore, I beat up on my husband. I mean, I don't, I, I don't have a husband, but... <laughs> and that's a natural, that's what husbands are for, by the way, in my humble opinion, all right? <laughs> and so that's part of the process. So one thing at a time. Yes, you have anger issues because it's a, a lot more complicated, a lot deeper than we can go into in one hour or one day or one year. It should be at least a decade. Okay, just to start. And so, uh, but uh, the, the fact, the great news is that now you recognize that anger is actually uh, not a good thing for you. So right there to me uh, is a great thing because you recognize that means it's you operating in wisdom for you to be able to recognize that this anger thing here is causing problems for you. Okay, that's the nature of wisdom. Don't you see the nice thing about that? That's wisdom manifesting. Having wisdom doesn't mean you're free from anger. Having wisdom means that you're able to recognize that you're in a state of confusion called anger. And therefore, you have a chance to rise above it. Whereas people that I call victims of anger are the ones that are totally afflicted by anger and are controlled by the anger. The actions are driven by anger. Instead of you saying, I'm angry, I'm so angry, and I want to stop this. And that's wisdom. I know wisdom is not as sexy, as appealing as it sounds, like the way that literature describes it, Buddhist wisdom and so forth. Uh, okay? the, pra the practice is that the practical aspect of wisdom, as my Chinese teacher put it, Masha Shenhua, he says, wisdom is to be able to see your faults. Okay? All right? You see your faults, ang you see the anger is not necessarily good for you. That right there is hope for you to improve. So what I will offer you today, uh, before we adjourn for lunch, I love to sit here and keep on talking to you, but I'm hungry. Uh, 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 what you do, okay? if I were you, is to focus on resolving the anger issues. One aspect only that makes you angry. For example, this person who asked me earlier, we will not mention her name, another woman, by the way. He says, I'm angry at my boss because he's not fair to me. How would I answer? How would, how would I attack it? First of all, you recognize that it's a lack of wisdom to be angry, okay? Uh, and next, in her case, I would say, you feel justified in being angry because you unfairly treated. In my case, for example, I'm no longer unfairly treated. My, personally, my personal case is that I am unfairly stabbed in my back. <laughs> oh, please. It hurts a lot more than you think. You, for you, you, you whine already, but oh, it's not fair to me. I'm way beyond fair. Okay? Sorry, I'm still angry about it. Okay. So, you recognize that the trigger of your anger is injustice. And what I want to teach you for her level, not uh, the WMT person's level. This person's level right here in Go For Us is that at your level, okay, you next step is to embrace being treated 
unfairly, very much like at my level, I need to embrace being stabbed in the back repeatedly, day after day, uh, week after week, year after year. And I go into advanced breathing. Because we can take it. No power? Ah, perfect. Perfect timing. We stop here today. Thank you, everyone. Let's go eat.